What's going on? It's your boy DJ TLM here checking out DJ TLM TV and this is my review of the DJM Rec app by Pioneer. Let's go. What's going on? It's your boy DJ TLM. You're watching DJ TLM TV. I'm in the lab right now testing Pioneer DJ's new recording app for your iPhone DJM Rec. Now there's other recording apps that you can get for your phone, but this one is a little bit different. This was created by Pioneer to use with a couple of their mixers. Yes, a couple, not all Pioneer mixers. I'll make sure to leave you a list of uh, compatible mixers in the description box down below. But Pioneer was kind enough to lend me a uh, Nexus 2. 900 Nexus 2 right here, and that one will work. So what you do is you connect your phone, your iPhone, to the mixer with a USB to lightning cable, and that's gonna give you a straight digital signal from the mixer. So you should, in theory, get real good, high quality recordings. Let's start by opening the app. DJM Rec. Now if I open the app and I'm not connected, it just looks like another audio recorder. So as you can see right here, it's registering my voice right now. That's because at the moment it's using the microphone from my phone. So it's catching anything, any sound in the direct surroundings. Uh, you could use it for that as well if you need a recorder, but that's not why we have it, of course. So let's get that lightning cable here, USB to lightning. In this case, you connect it to the top that has that USB port on top of the mixer. Let's go into the phone. Bang, straight away, successfully connected to DJ Mixer. Then we go to the settings screen, and it tells me that I'm connected to a DJM 900 Nexus 2. So it actually recognizes what kind of mixer it is connected to. Uh, we have a couple of options right here. You can use the limiter on the DJM. You can choose your audio output, lightning cable, DJM, or headphone jack. We've got the lightning cable right here. Uh, auto rec, I'm not using that. Uh, display of timestamp info, it's on in this case. I'll just leave that on. And well, that's basically it for the features, but you don't need to set too much else. You just wanna press record. So let's go to the recording screen. And over here, I have the option to choose a couple of different formats. I have Wave 44.1 kilohertz selected. You can also use a 48 kilohertz or a couple of AAC formats. Now, that could be useful if you don't have a lot of memory on your phone. I have plenty of space on this telephone, so I would definitely use the Wave format. It is bigger, but the quality is also better. But if you have limited space, you still wanna record your set. You have the option to choose a couple of different AAC uh, formats all the way up to 320 or even as low as 64. But that is gonna give you extremely lower quality compared to the WAV format. So the choice is yours. Um, I have the option to add a little bit of volume so I can go from zero dB and add up to 12 dB. So depending on the signal. Now, as you may notice, Right now, it's not registering my voice anymore. That's because the microphone from the telephone is now disabled. It is only getting audio from whatever is connected, in this case, the mixer. So, for instance, if I move this vinyl, you can tell that it's picking up that signal and it can record that signal. Um, let's get a beat in here. Let's get a loop. So it's picking up the loop. Um, but it's not that loud, I can tell that. I actually don't want to turn anything up on the mixer now, so I'm gonna add a couple of dB. And as you can tell, now I have a way louder signal. It's all the way up to minus eight dB. That's pretty good. All right, so let's hit record and record a piece. There we go. I already tested this once before, and I know that if I hit playback right now, we can't hear anything. That's because the lightning cable is still connected. So if we want to hear it through the phone, we're going to have to unplug. Now, I heard that there is a way that you can actually uh, get playback on the mixer. I just haven't figured out how. If I find out how to do that before I release this video, I'll make sure to add that in the description box down below. Uh, otherwise, I'll mention it in a future video, but there should be a way to get playback straight from that recording app back into a channel on the mixer. So forget about that playback for a second. I'm just gonna unplug. There we go. 
Uh, disconnected with DJM, yes I know. So now it's catching my voice again, but that's not what we're looking for. So let's go to play edit. This is the file I just recorded. So there we have it. Now we have a couple of options here. I can set a start and end point. So if I only want a part, uh, let's say you want to upload it straight from your phone to Mixcloud and you want to get the beginning part and end part off. This will allow you to set that. Now you don't have a lot of cut and paste options or anything like that. It's not like uh, extended audio editing software, but it's cool that you can at least get that start point and ending point, right? Um, then you do have the option to change a little bit about the sound. So after you record it, if it's not loud enough, you have the option to uh, change the loudness and you can go all the way up to as many as 18 dB that you can add. Now, I'm not gonna need that, that's a lot. My recording was at around minus eight dB. So maybe I'll bump it up a couple, but not too much. You don't wanna put it on too loud. Now you can also add some sub bass just in case it's sounding a little bit too thin. I wouldn't know why, but if that is the case, then you can add that. And if you add that, it doesn't show it on the wave file now, but as soon as I start to play it, it will show you how much it's actually adding. So, as you see that, you can see how much it's adding, and I definitely don't wanna add more, because then it's gonna be too loud. This already looks too loud to me. I'm gonna take a little bit of loudness off. Now I'm already at like minus two. Take a little bit more off. This looks pretty good to me. This is like minus three. So it, it's cool to have those options. Now in my case, I would not use this. I would just take the file as recorded and then uh, um, do a little editing on my audio software at home. So speaking about editing, you have the option right here. If I go to file to select your file and go to upload, and then you can choose between Mixcloud. If you wanna go from that club, you just did your set, you wanna upload it straight away, send out a tweet or a post, let them know like, I just finished my set, you can check it out right now on Mixcloud. You have the ability to send it straight to your Mixcloud account. Or in my case, I'll use Dropbox because that's my preferred method to get that file home. So I can upload to Dropbox, but you also have the option to hit other, and then you can choose between, um, a couple of things on your phone. So for instance, I could also choose to use uh, OneDrive. I could choose to use my Google Drive. Uh, you have several options, but like I said, in my case, I would use Dropbox to get that file um, to my computer. That is basically it. That is all that it comes down to, but there is another feature I wanna talk about, and that is the tab that says Live. Now. If you're into live streaming sets and you're using your phone to do that, for instance, on uh, Instagram, Facebook Live, and up until now you've been using the audio from the room, and I see a lot of you doing these live streams with mixes, and you can tell that it's just the audio coming from the speakers. If you connect this to the phone, you can live stream and get the audio straight from the mixer for your live stream, and you can choose between YouTube, Facebook Live, Periscope, Instagram, and Snapchat. So. A lot of possibilities here. Now I've already tested this and you gotta keep one thing in mind. If you're used to talking and mixing, you cannot do that by just talking in the room because the microphone on the phone is not working. So I tested this on Facebook Live and I started to talk to the people and I could tell straight away they're probably not hearing me. So I asked them, can you hear me? No. Then I started the music and I asked them, can you hear the music? And they could hear the music just fine. So it is only getting the audio from the mixer. So either you have to connect the microphone to your mixer or just not talk. That is up to you. But I would definitely prefer to have that good quality audio for my stream straight from the mixer instead of getting the sound from the room. It's just never the same. It's gonna be a lot clearer and that's gonna enhance your live stream. Now there is another important test that I wanted to do and that is testing to see if there is a big difference in quality between using something like this. This is my recorder. I'm currently using it for my voice, but I also take this to some of my gigs and then I use it to connect straight to one of the outputs on the mixer to record my set. This can record uh, high quality wave files as well. So it would be cool to see, get a little comparison, if I just uh, output a little bit of audio from the mixer and record it straight to the phone with the Rec app 
and to my recorder. So I did that and let's see if there's any difference to be seen or heard when it comes to those files. Now I do believe there's gonna be one difference when I played around with the game and that is because the app allows you to use a limiter inside the mixer. So even when you're clipping, it should not sound as if it's clipping in your recording. Now we'll see what happens. I turned the gain and the trim, the master gain and the trim all the way up. So let's see how that sounds on both uh, of the files as well. Check it out. So here we see two files. I recorded these simultaneously, one through the Zoom H5 and the other one through the USB output with the Rec app. Let's see what happens when we turn the channel gain all the way up. You can tell that the analog file is starting to clip like crazy right now. Uh, this is pretty much unusable. And when you turn the master all the way up, it is just straight garbage. Throw it away right now. <laughs> unusable. Now this is the rec app right here, recorded at the same time, uh, the input on both devices was set the same. Let's see what happens when we turn up the channel volume. Here we have the limiter inside the DJM making sure that the signal that we receive in the rec app is still very usable. Now we turn the master all the way up, let's go, bang. Even though this would clip like crazy, your recording will still be very usable. So that's it for my review of the DJM Rec app, a recording app for your iPhone to record straight from the mixer, your Pioneer mixer. Like I said, it only works with a couple of mixers, but for us, for instance, here in the Netherlands, in a lot of the clubs where we play, the 900 Nexus 2 is the standard mixer. So even if you don't own a mixer that is compatible with the recording app, if you know that your residency venues have a mixer that is compatible, then it's still useful. So keep that in mind. Now the app is not cheap, I think it's 10 bucks, so it is a little investment, but if you don't currently own any equipment to record high quality sets, this could be a cool thing. Now of course, if you're using DJ software, chances are that you already have the option to record within your DJ software, so in that case, that could be a pretty good option as well. I don't know if that sound quality is gonna compare to what you can get with an external recorder or with the Rec app, but it is definitely convenient if you're using like Serato or Rekordbox DJ to just hit record in the software and not worry about anything and have it record straight to your hard drive. So whatever you prefer, you have the option. The Rec app is just another option. Of course, you have other devices like iRig that you can also use to record to your phone, but keep in mind, devices like that take the analog output of the mixer and don't get the digital signal straight from the mixer like you get with this USB cable. So there is a difference. Is it enough? for a live mix that you're gonna upload to the internet where the quality is already gonna go down a bit, you have to decide that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. If so, make sure you like the video, share the video, and if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and also activate notifications so you don't miss out on any of my future reviews, tips and tricks, Q&A videos, and everything else that I drop on this channel. That's it for now, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. Peace.